Hello again, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Game Pass Grab Bag, your weekly podcast reviewing games from the Game Pass Collection, bringing you three unique perspectives from varying skill range. I am the rootinest, tootinest, shootinest cowboy, Andrew. With me, the slowest gun in the West, Keith. Hello. And the one who always has a snake in her boot, Liz. Hey, guys. This week was my pick, which was West of Dead by Upstream Arcade. West of Dead is a roguelike third-person cover-based shooter. As far as the story goes, Keith, do you think this game takes place in Purgatory? I I don't think so. It, I'm really kind of sick and tired of you bringing it up, quite honestly. This is just a... a skeleton cowboy shooting possibly dead people i don't know i couldn't get far enough in the game to tell you <laughs> i don't know i think this game takes place in purgatory okay welcome welcome to game pass grab bag where every game is purgatory yep and i literally just picked this game to do that joke so we'll see you all again next week <laughs> But yes, this game takes place in Purgatory, where you are a cowboy basically trying to undo the evil that has been caused by this mysterious preacher. And you are essentially just, as Purgatory goes, repeat and runs over and over again, and trying to get stronger, get new items, and try to fight the evil. Going around, since this was my pick, I guess I will start. Overall, I think we'd give this game a pass. It's not a terrible game. There's some things that are pretty nice about it, but... Overall, this game is just very, very reminiscent of Dead Cells. And if you had to pick between the two, I would pick Dead Cells. But if you beat Dead Cells and you're looking for something new, you may want to give this a shot. But overall, I give it a pass. So I'm with you. It's a pass. It's not really even a very hesitant pass. I liked this game for about the first hour I played it, and then I was really done with it. I I don't even necessarily think I agree that it's very Dead Cells-like. I I know you have your reasons, and I'll let you get to those, but I still don't think that it makes it very Dead Cells-like. I think it just makes it a boring cover shooter and not as fun as it should be for everything that it is. So I guess we all agree. I think it's a pass, too. For me, it felt like Ashen and Dead Cells had a baby. And for me, it felt like a lot of work. And because I don't get paid for it, I don't want to do work. (laughs) So... (laughs) For me, I, it was very hard to put in the hours, and overall, it was just too hard for me. I am really embarrassed to say I didn't even finish the first chapter. I like I got to the boss. I kept dying. I can't tell you how many times that I played this first chapter, and it was just it was too hard. Yeah, I mean that is the best way to describe it. This game is just a lot of work. But uh, getting into it, so the general story, as we kind of touch base, you are this ghost the spirit that is stuck in purgatory as soon as you start your character doesn't remember anything he slowly figures out that this is purgatory and he's hearing these stories of these spirits and ghosts that are stuck here and the good spirits are trying to go east while the evil spirits are trying to go west which i'm assuming is obviously reference from heaven and hell but there is this mysterious preacher that is basically clogging up the system so you, as this mysterious plane walker, is going around and trying to free the spirits and shuffle them off to the east or the west. And as you start to uncover more of the story, you kind of start to piece together what's going on. The, bo- the main interesting thing about this game, as you've, if you've seen any trailers, is that it's voiced by Ron Perlman, which was a nice touch. But I think it's very unfortunate that they literally spent their entire voice casting budget on him. Because there is no other voice acting, just him. But what did you guys think of the story? I think it's really interesting. Hearing you talk about it, I'm like, that sounds like a great game. I could not get far enough to really uncover all of that. And I I do think that Ron Perlman was fantastic. But I, I couldn't get invested in it because I just couldn't get, like, I just couldn't get far enough. I also think it was kind of annoying that because I kept dying over and over again. I kept having to hear the same dialogue over and over again. Yeah. And so one thing that you do all the time, like when you finish a floor, is you get rid of your sin. And every single time you talk to the person, they ask you, oh, do you want to get rid of your sin? It's like, yeah, I do. We go through this every time. <laughs> and so for me, it was like, come on. Like, it, I just don't have it. Yeah. Or change it up. I thought the witch had a, a slight level of voice dialogue. I thought she mutters something to you. 
from what I recall. She makes a noise. She basically kind of goes, oh, ah, that's like basically it. Yeah. I, I, I just want to hear you do that. So bad <laughs> in games. I don't know why games do that. Uh, well, because yeah. Ron Perlman. And to that point, yes, Ron Perlman. Fantastic. Great voice character. But yeah, the the story I got about as far as the East and West thing in Purgatory, I think I beat the first boss. I don't remember. You did. You got one more achievement than I did. Okay. And it was because you, you beat him. Yeah, so I did that once, I think. And that was about it. And then otherwise, I just felt like I was doing the same thing over and over and over again. And I even get that, hey, it's Purgatory. That's kind of what they're going for. Uh, it's it's a little bit overkill. Um, this this game is just not accessible in any way. It also felt like you're doing the same thing over and over again because unlike Dead Cells, I mean, the weapons change a little bit when you start the game, but there's only like a couple and they're very similar. You have uh, a pistol and like a shotgun type gun and there's a little bit of variation, but not really. So you're going into it with kind of the same things and... Further down the line, you also get different abilities and things like that. But I was getting the same of everything. And I know it's because I hadn't really uncovered more in the game. And you also put points into things so you can uncover like new weapons and, and things like that. But again, if you can't get far enough in the game, it just feels like the same thing over and over and over again. So as far as like I got much farther than you guys did. So I actually uncovered more of the story. In the story, I thought overall had nice pieces to it. I just didn't like how they delivered it. I think they were really, just really focused on Ron Perlman in this, which wasn't bad. I think he did a fantastic job. But the dialogue, how the story actually went is whenever you kind of either defeat an outlaw or free one of the innocent spirits so they could go east, you would collect a little piece of memory. And you're essentially collecting two sets of memory. There's one where you're learning the story of the preacher and the other one where you're learning the story of your character who you find out his name is Mason and he was a sheriff. And I didn't like how they delivered the story. Anytime you picked up a memory, if you got to the witch, that's how you would get the story. It would be this tapestry, and you're essentially uncovering layers of it. And anytime you got a layer, it would show a little bit of a picture, and Ron Perlman would narrate something. But it was always really vague. I see a little boy, his hands are bloody, and he stares at his father. Like That was it. Like That's, that's kind of like the extent of the story. And it's just like, okay... And it was inconsistent how you're getting these bits. And you also don't know if you're learning the preacher story or your character story. So you're getting this memory and it's like, okay, but who is that little boy? Are, are you talking about the preacher? Or are you talking about you? So it was just really inconsistent. But they really obviously wanted Ron Perlman to narrate it, which, like I said, he did fine. But I would have loved some sort of cutscene or more visual because I was getting lost. And in the, in the end, I just didn't care. Does it feel unfinished? No, you can, when it comes to the story, you're kind of learning that the preacher was this evil guy and he was trying to do a ritual and it sounds like they were basically setting up a way to cause an issue in purgatory and kind of be like rulers of purgatory and you as the sheriff end up being killed by the preacher and that's why you're in purgatory basically trying to undo the wrong that's going on, but it just... It was just kind of uninteresting. It was just the fact that you were just literally getting a tiny sprinkle of story every, I don't know, it depends how well of a run you're doing. And then if you're finding a spirit to give you a memory, it was just really inconsistent that it just, it didn't draw me in, but it didn't feel incomplete. It just felt basic, which I think was just a huge miss because I, I loved kind of what this game was going with. I don't know. But I feel like if, for me, I personally think that the gameplay was kind of basic and I feel like you can't have a basic gameplay and a, and a basic story together and what i mean by that with the gameplay is you're getting cover and you're shooting and the a aiming you didn't really have to aim too much but like i even when i started playing it like i couldn't even tell if i was like in cover or not like andrew had to help me out because sometimes i thought that i was but i wasn't but it really was just cover shoot run cover yeah. shoot run and so for me, I think, like, one has to be exceptional. See, where I think that could have been so much different, and this is where I don't think it was anything like Dead Cells, is there was no variety to the guns. I mean, from what I can tell, there's a lot of guns, but you rarely unlock them. And 
there's not a lot that you'll find throughout a like a, an individual floor, maybe like two or three. And if you don't find good guns at all, kiss that run goodbye and just start over because it's a waste of your time. Yeah, there's there's a handful of things with this game that if they fix or improve, this would be a much more enjoyable experience. So as Liz was saying, how the combat is where you're basically going to room to room a lot of it's dark, and there's these lanterns that you light up, and it'll stun enemies. And if an enemy is in the light, you essentially kind of have like an auto-aim. You are you have a higher chance of shooting the enemy. You can't shoot them in the dark, but you have to be really precise, and it's hard to do. So the first con- issue I had, as Liz was kind of saying, is the controls. To go into cover, you just kind of push against one of the objects that are in the room, but it was inconsistent. Sometimes, as Liz was saying, she couldn't figure out if she was in cover, and I had the same issue. I, I was times so I'm pushing up against the thing, but my character was standing, and then I would just start getting blasted, and it's like, okay, it would be nice that I actually had a button, and I knew that I was undercover. And yeah, Keith, as you were saying with the guns, the guns, they were quite varied. The, a lot of them do kind of different things. Some add status effects, which is another issue. There's a bunch of status effects, but there's no guide. There's nothing explaining to you what they do. Obviously, some are pretty basic. If they catch on fire, you know they're taking fire damage. Bleeding apparently can stack, but fire can't. There's also the plague status effect. I don't know what it does, but it hurts enemies. So there's like a lot of these different effects that guns do, but I have no idea what they do. And I agree with you, Keith. That's my other complaint is guns are so expensive to unlock in this game. At most, when you you complete a level, you're getting between 10 to 20 souls. And a decent gun, not really. Ugh. I checked the final boss when you beat the game, he only gives you 24 souls. Ugh. And a decent gun to unlock costs well over 300 souls to unlock. That is a huge cap. Like, they expect you to play this game and do multiple runs just to unlock one gun. And there's a ton of weapons. I really liked the amount of weapons, charms, and gadgets you can get in this game. But like I said, they're crazy expensive. They really need to reduce the amount it takes to get them or give you a better option to get souls. I think the iron was also very easy to miss. I definitely missed a ton. Yeah. Because they're always like in a dark corner and you have to shoot them. But it took me a really long time to even figure out that they were there. Going back for a minute when you're talking about the controls. I don't know if you guys had this issue. Sometimes I guess like the game is kind of clunky in that when I would go up to a lantern, it would always like ask if I wanted to heal instead of ignite. And so I'd always have this like a second where it wouldn't let me ignite the fire, ignite the light in order to stun the enemies. And so I would get blasted with gunfire. And there are a couple other things with that. And the same with like the walls, when you're near them, they don't show up. So sometimes I was like, where's the door? <laughs> did that ever happen to you? Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, I definitely and did. Also, it would always pause when you entered a room as well. So I'd be running in a certain direction. It would kind of just like throw me off. I just felt like the gameplay wasn't clean. It wasn't. Like Dark Souls felt tight. It felt tight when you're trying to like roll and dodge. If you got hit by something, you knew it was your fault. You knew that you just weren't quick enough or you rolled into a projectile or something like that. In this, it felt inconsistent. Like you had a roll and dodge, but it was inconsistent. And then... The other thing, the big control thing that I know we all can agree on, the camera angle? is how awful the camera was. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to turn so badly to look around because sometimes I couldn't see what was around me. But yeah, it is odd that you just couldn't control the camera at all. For the most part, it did a decent job. At least letting you able to kind of see things. But as Liz was saying, when you go into a room, the camera would just focus on the entire room and would zoom out. Sometimes it wouldn't zoom out for me. And I couldn't see any of the enemies in the room. And, like, they're shooting at me. And it's like, I'm just going to shoot where the bullets are coming from. Hopefully I hit the guy. But, yeah, there was just times where it's like, I just I just want to rotate the camera. Let me rotate it. And it would also zoom in when you were done with all the enemies. And every once in a while I wouldn't do that. So I would think that there was another enemy in the room. Like, you can definitely see a noticeable shift when all the enemies are dead. And so sometimes I would be, like, sneaking around, like, looking for the guy. I'd be like, are they just not here? Which, what did you guys think of the enemies? Because I felt like the first floor, they were very easy. And then the second floor, right before you get to, like, the first boss, they introduce much harder characters, much harder enemies. So they have, like, the skeleton dogs. And they would also incorporate ledges. So you'd go to a room that would be completely empty. And then you'd crawl up the ladder. And there was, like... A monster waiting for you so you didn't really have you'd have to like quickly dodge 
So do the enemies get more difficult? I mean, I'm going to rely on Andrew for that answer because I think I only got about as far as you. And I didn't think they were all that interesting. I thought they were kind of a nuisance, if anything. But just... Uh, the enemies? There's a good amount of enemies, but they're all, for the most part, still pretty similar. Anytime you enter a new world, you always got a ham you always got like a specific enemy that's a melee. You always have one that's a type of sniper. And then you normally have one that throws some sort of bomb or grenade or something like that. So the enemy types, for the most part, weren't too varied. They did enough that like it went with the aesthetic of the level that you're playing, but you could at least kind of figure out what you're doing. And as far as the enemies getting harder, yes, I thought the difficulty spike of this game was pretty crazy. You go from the first level, you're getting le weapon levels 1 and 2. And as soon as you go to, like let's say, the Bayou, the Bayou weapons are level 4 to 5. Like It's a huge jump. And so the first two rooms, you're really struggling. If you get hit once or twice, like two or three times, you're, you're dead right away. So I felt like anytime you're going to a new area, the difficulty just shoots up. And it's a hard balance to try to get the weapons and get better. Because in the end, I just kept running out of the room and try to bring some of the enemies with me and basically whittle them down as yeah, I keep running Even back. doing that was like a really brutal strategy because then you're just bringing them down these tight hallways where you can't really see what the edge of the walls are and you can't see what's going on. And just, exactly. It, it, heaven forbid you're, you're fighting like a brute type of one that throws some axe at you that takes up the whole hallway because good luck getting out of that hallway in time. I can't tell you how many times I died that way. <laughs> and as far as the boss is, well, boss that I fought, the Wendigo, it, I wouldn't mind so much, you know, him being difficult, but it was the fact that at one point, I think I had 140 health, and he hit me once, and I was dead. It, it, that happened to and me it was just a like, lot. Well, <laughs> this isn't... I don't know. It, if you're going to play that type of difficulty, give me, like, a health bar that's three hearts, and I lose one per hit or something. Just don't make it feel like... It, there's any purpose to having that 140 health versus 70 health if I'm just going to die in one hit anyways. Yeah, and I felt like the upgrading didn't help. So as you're going through the floors, you find, I don't know what you would call them. Shrines. Yeah, shrines. And you could upgrade your health bar. You could make your firearms hurt more, different things like that. And then obviously you're getting new weapons. I didn't think that you got enough of an advantage as you were leveling up. So by the time that I got to the boss, and every run you have to start over as well. And sometimes you wouldn't find as many shrines. And for me, I didn't want to make sure I like, didn't miss anything because I just wanted it to be over. So for me, I just thought that they should have helped more because I thought that once you upgrade your health, I felt like I got more enemies and it didn't really Well, the first, me. the first floor consistently had two shrines, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, two shrines, one yeah. chest and a shopkeeper. If you go to the next level, which is the hunt, it also has two shrines, one chest and a shopkeeper. But you can't travel yet. So for me, there were some times where I got to like the far end and I was like, do I really want to go all the way back? To yes, the, the answer is, is yes. <laughs> That's no, my but it didn't. But but I even when I got all of it, I still felt like there. I mean, there were some runs where I was doing so good, and then all of a sudden I go to a room, and there was like seven enemies, and I just got annihilated. So I felt like whenever I thought that I was getting the upper hand, like no, there I was something wrong. I agree. So this is why I'm surprised, Keith. You don't feel like this game was like Dead Cells because I feel like it takes a lot of things from Dead Cells. Like as Liz was saying with these shrines. When you pick it, you have yeah one of three things: your health, your gun damage, or your items increase in strength as well, which is very reminiscent of Dead Cells. When you went to when you collected one of the shrines, you could pick like one of the three colors that essentially did the same thing. And the more you're visiting the shrines, the more you're putting a point into a certain category, it has diminishing return. So the first time you level up your guns, it increases your gun damage by like ninety percent. The next time, it only does like fifty percent, then twenty percent, then ten, five. Like it goes down quick. But with Dead Cells, there's so much variety. Like, it, to me, it felt like a different game. Like, I said earlier that it was Ashen and Dead Cells for me, but I, I don't think it took the good stuff from Dead Cells. And I know that sounds harsh, but with Dead Cells, there were times when you started a run and you had so many different types of weapons and you got a combo and you're like, this is going to be great. I never felt like that with this game. So I don't think it felt like Dead Cells. See, I... It, the I will say I found combos where I, I thought, boy, this is great. I'm having the time of my life. 
and then I'd come to a room and I'd take every shot in the first two seconds and be dead because there was just no there was no good defensive buffs there was really at least from what I could into and what I could unlock I just felt like even having a good quote unquote combo was eh, at best and the reload sucked. I felt like I was waiting for forever for it to reload. You don't get a lot of bullets. And whenever I play a combat game, I like to have a lot of bullets. It, <laughs> I need them. It does not favor panic, is what I will say. I don't think that they're actually that bad, but I'm assuming that you very much like Neil is. You you start to get the anxiety as you're getting you're taking shots and you need to reload and so you just go about like halfway through and then you only have two bullets instead of four and then it feels like yeah. 25 minutes to reload when really it you just cut it off halfway through <laughs> never shoot a full clip during the fight did i explain that well <laughs> no i did the same exact thing <laughs> but as you were also aware that when you're in cover you reload faster yes the mechanic yeah so to also explain too the re- you do not reload like there's not a button to reload your character will automatically reload when you stop firing but if you're at least shooting one gun, obviously your character is not going to reload. So there's a certain point where you just have to like sit there and wait for your character to reload the guns. And depending on what gun you have, depends how fast he reloads it. But I do agree. Like as you guys are saying with like the whole combo and stuff, there really wasn't too many guns where I'm like, oh, "This is a great combo. I'm gonna do great." Anytime I died, I just felt like I was screwed over. I felt like I entered a room and there was just no cover for me to get into right away. And there's a bunch of snipers. And every corner is covered, and I just I just couldn't do anything. All the lights are off, so I can't see any enemy. And if I try to go to a lantern, I'm just getting blasted because I'm not by, behind cover. So I do understand this is a, the huge difference between Dead Cells and this game is, like I said, Dead Cells, if you died, it felt like it was my fault. But in this, I feel like I'm having a great run, and then all of a sudden I turn a corner and I just get blasted. And I agree with you guys. You have 140 health, and you take one bullet, and you're dead. And it's... There was no defense you get in this game. It's only you got more health. And as you got farther in the game, naturally enemies are doing more damage. But since you're getting a din- diminishing return by getting the shrines, you're not getting enough health to counterbalance the amount of damage the enemy's doing. So I I agree. I just felt like I was just getting robbed any time I lost. Well, also, I noticed that when they were aiming at me, if I did a roll, it didn't matter if... I should have gotten out of the way. They would just hit me anyways. Because you could see when they lock in on you. And I would I would roll and dodge and try to cover. And no matter what, I would get hit. When there's no possible way that their bullet should hit me. So there were some times that I died and I thought it was bull. I, I half agree with you on that. Because okay. if, <laughs> if you do a quick enough roll at the right time, it does like a slow-mo cinematic. That happens to me a lot, yeah. Yeah. But most enemies shoot twice. So first bullet, you will dodge. But the second bullet, I agree, you will not dodge. Yeah. They'll just hit you. That was a, and you can't roll fast enough. That was another irk. Or if, heaven forbid, again, there's two shooters in there. Well, you might yeah. dodge one bullet, but you're going to take the other two plus the one, the second one from the guy who shot you the first time. It yeah. just, yeah, it never felt fair. And it just took so much fun away from the game. It had everything going into it that I thought I was going to love. And even the first handful of times, I just thought, oh, I'll get a little better. I'll unlock some more stuff. And then I unlocked a couple things and then I realized it was going to take me a decade to unlock anything else. <laughs> and yep. I just didn't feel like getting better. And even when I did, I just, eh, it just got more boring because then I was just sitting behind cover 90% of the time. Yeah. Which I had a random question for you guys. I saw online that it was described as a twin stick shooter. And a lot of people were really irritated by that. They're like, this is not that at all. Is it a twin stick shooter? Well, traditionally, correct me if I'm wrong, Andrew, twin stick would be like it actually shoots when you aim one of the sticks, right? And that's where it's not, not technically. Well, you're aiming with the... It is technically a twin stick shooter. Twin stick shooters describe as you're basically moving with one stick and you're aiming with the other stick. And that's what you do in this game. So your left stick, you're moving your character around, but you can obviously use your right stick to shoot behind you, in front of you. So technically it is a twin stick shooter, but when you're describing a game as a twin stick shooter, it's generally like fast pace, a lot of dodging and stuff like that. This game does not do that. It obviously encourages you to stay behind cover and to pop up and shoot people. So I can understand why people would argue that's not a twin stick shooter. There was a big debate about it online. Yeah. (laughs) Technically with its controls, it is kind of one. Okay. 
twin stick shooter that we liked was Enter the Gungeon. Yes. That's that's a case in point of a twin stick shooter. You moved with one stick and aimed with the other one. So yes, you technically do in this game, but you don't play like a twin stick shooter. Did you guys ever get to the Outlaws? No. No. I don't think so. So there's a couple of Outlaw battles. This is another big thing that really irritated me in the game. So normally when you're playing a roguelike game, roguelike games are fantastic like types of games for people to do speed runs. This game had so many mechanics of it that made it would be awful for a speed run. In case in point, it's the Outlaws. Outlaws, for the most part, are kind of random battles, and they're like mini boss fights. And normally with a mini boss fight, you think, hey, this is a great way to get souls or currency, whatever, to help upgrade my character. Like in Dead Cells, if you beat a boss, you've got a ton of cells. Because it was like, you know, achievement. Hey, good job, you killed the boss. In this, if you killed an outlaw, you got five cells, which is nothing. Especially when weapons cost over 300 to unlock. But whenever you did an outlaw fight, it would say outlaw found. And the outlaw would just stand there in the middle. And you can't shoot him. You have to wait like five, ten seconds of it just say outlaw found. And then the outlaw would finally go and cover. And then you could actually start the battle. And then when you kill the outlaw... There, of course, has to be a Ron Perlman dialogue, which is fine, but you can't skip it. And you're locked in this room, just standing there. And then eventually it says, Outlaw killed. And then you still have to wait another 5 to 10 seconds for that to fade away. And then finally the door opens. It just takes like a solid 20 seconds of you just standing there to start the fight and then to finish the fight. And it was just like such an odd thing. It's like, let's speed this up. I want to want to get going. I, I know I beat the guy. But... <sighs> That, a lot of fights I thought were fun, but it was just like that little thing just irritated me every time I did it. Um, and then did you guys ever find the lost souls that were trying to head to the east? No. <laughs> I mean, we... I, I can only speak for myself, but I, I did not get far at all. I didn't even... I couldn't beat the first boss. So in Dead Cells, every once in a while you find like a cursed chest that would give you like a special objective. Like, oh, if you take one hit, you'll die right away. Or you have to fight an elite monster or something like that. This game has something like that as well. You find these white souls that are trying to head east, but they're stuck with a curse. And you accept the curse yourself. I w- was hoping this to be kind of a fun, interesting mechanic, but it only did the same thing where if you got hit once, you died. So you had to kill about six enemies to break the curse. And that was another mechanic that always I felt like I got robbed because I couldn't get behind cover and I would just get hit by one thing and just die. That's basically how the game goes anyways. So Yeah, very true. But... As frustrating as the gameplay is, I will say the thing I loved about this game is the atmosphere, specifically the graphics. I love the graphics of this game. Does it change a lot throughout the game? Because I think the second floor, it was snowy, but it still looked very much the same. I thought it looked fantastic, but I don't really know how much it changes throughout the game. Not too much. You're still basically going through hallways to a room, to hallways to a room. It does that. The wallpaper obviously kind of changes, and there's the scenery is a little bit different. So it didn't do anything too crazy, but I at least love the cell shaded graphics with it. Like I thought the character models were really cool. I loved your character design. I thought the environments were really cool, but they didn't do anything too crazy. But I thought it fit well with the story. See, the graphics were, or I guess maybe the artistry is more what I'm thinking, but it looked like something i was gonna like i like the whole like cell shading or whatever it is just that weird everything about it but it ever it just made everything feel milky and flat and like the more i played it and i just it kind of it got to a point where it irritated me because it made the game (laughs) hard to play actually It, it was like too much yeah it's hard when you see the same rooms over and over and over again i wish there was a little bit more diversity in it but overall, I thought it looked really nice. I, I like the art style of the game. And what we were talking about earlier with not being able to see enemies at all, unless like the light was triggered and stuff, I do wish there were some changes with that. But overall, I think, I think the artistry was solid. I mean, I guess I can see... I think the biggest complaint I have, I guess, with the artistry of it is this game loves its black. Yes. <laughs> it is very, very, very dark. You cannot play this game at all if you have any sort of glare on your TV. Or Let, during daytime. If yeah. there's like a good amount of light in your room, even if there's no glare from the sun, if it's just bright in the room, it's going to be a no. Luckily, the graphic setting lets you turn up the brightness. But I think on your TV, Liz, you had brightness up to maximum. and It was still a little hard to see. So 
you definitely have to be playing this game when it's dark out because this game is very dark. I love the characters. I thought they all looked great. The enemies, like, you don't really see too much of them. I mean, they're very small on the screen. But when, like, the bartender and all the side characters, I thought they looked really good. I at least love the music of this game, too. I thought the music did a good job, except... Whenever you cleared a room, it always did this guitar riff of do 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 do, and you just reminded always me hear it so much of Walker Texas Ranger. So I loved it. I loved it at first, but then after hearing it for the hundred thousandth time of do 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 do, I was like, okay, I, I get it. Thank you. I was waiting for Chuck Norris to come in. <laughs> I mean, that could that could help the game, I think. But I yeah, I I didn't mind it at first, but it got to be really really tedious and. Also, again, just living on the same two floors for 99% of everything I played, it just got really samey, and I kind of got tired of it real quick, and being irritated with the game didn't help. I just, I don't know, I mostly tuned it out. See, I thought the music that plays when you're going between rooms and stuff like that, I thought it did a really good job with this kind of dark overtone and you know, obviously just purgatory, but also doing a really good job of, like, the Western theme. Overall, I love the music. I just hated that uh, exit, the uh, battle music. I don't remember the music, to be honest. <laughs> I do remember that when you cleared the room, I remember that just because I love that so much. But I actually don't remember the music in the game. It was mostly forgettable. So as we talked about, obviously, earlier, Ron Perlman is the big voice actor of this game. Do you think it helped the game at all? Not really. It was, it was nice, but it didn't really do much for me. Do you think it would have been better if they actually had more voice cast? I think it would have been better if they had Terry Crews. <laughs> <laughs> Just constantly shouting while you're in purgatory and shooting I don't people. Know. I, I thought Ron Perlman be fit. Like, he I did. Thought it, he was great for it. And so for me, I think it was worth it just having him. Well, if anything, I, I, I think something about there being Ron Perlman, I just at that point wanted Hellboy. Instead of my flying, you know, Nicolas Cage Ghost Rider. It just didn't <laughs> oh, feel see, right. See, I thought of Sons of Anarchy. Eh. That's what I was thinking during all of this. You see, know, the whole outlaw thing. I was thinking Hellboy, because I liked him in Hellboy. Well, and he's, and he's like fighting demons and stuff in Hellboy, so. And that was a great was movie. Wasn't he also in Beauty and the Beast? It was like an early 90s or late 80s uh, TV show. I have no idea. Pop. I'm pretty sure. So I think one was that, too. So, as much as I loved Ron Perlman's voice, there was a couple of times where it was just getting really annoying. Specifically, every time he started a run, he always would say, oh, the barkeeper has something to tell me. Every single time. And every time you go to the barkeeper, all he says is, good luck out there. And it's like, the barkeeper has nothing to tell me. Stop telling me the barkeeper has something to say. You can't blame Ron Perlman for that, though. No, I know. And obviously, that's <laughs> obviously it's the game design. But I think this game would have done better with actual voice acting. As much as I loved Ron Perlman's narration... It was always awkward going up to somebody and they just say like, Rrr. like you just hear a sound and that's it. <laughs> it was annoying. But I thought he did a good job at least. Oh, yeah, I think it, was... it would have made the game feel more alive. Yeah. It, it did make it feel more of a Western too. Like he has a very good voice for this type of tone. Yeah, it was definitely a good get on, on Ron Perlman. I, the thing is, I can't really picture him playing video games. Which, for me, like, we played Quantum Break. I mean, I think Sean Ashmore, I think he actually plays video games and stuff. So for me, I'm like, I wonder if this was just about the money for him. I mean, no, I'm not saying it's bad to do something just for the money, but I'm just saying I personally can't see Ron <laughs> Perlman playing video games. I don't know if that's rude or not. I just, like, personally. I think you'd be surprised. I'm going to look. I bet, he has a, I bet he has a Twitch channel. <laughs> <laughs> and so also, too, this game does have some DLC. It's just a small add-on. It's called the Crow. And all it adds is a Crow Familiar. It adds a new weapon, which is called the Mortar. And it adds a new map location with a new boss. Is it uh, free? No. It costs $3. So it's pretty cheap. But overall, I would not say it's worth it. The Crow Familiar, I was expecting a bit more from. All it really does is just... Y you see a Crow kind of fly by every once in a while. Or like you see the shadow of it. But, once again, it's a black crow, and this game is very black. So 90% of the time, I never even saw my crow. It didn't do anything. You would just see it kind of fly around you every once in a while, and sometimes land on the, the map when there was no enemies around. 
But I didn't do anything. I can't believe you bought it. I feel like <laughs> this whole episode has been so negative, and you're like, yeah, I bought it. Well, it's because we yeah. got some support from some curve. listeners, so... You know, I try to make sure we can give people more insight if it's worth getting the DLC. So you bought a crow. Yep. And the mortar I wasn't able to unlock because it cost 350 souls to unlock. And I started to get to it, but I still need to get like 200 more souls for it. And that's just frustrating. As far as the battlefield, I got to that location and it was nice, but nothing too unique or interesting. So I, I didn't care for the battlefield location that much. So overall, I wouldn't recommend the DLC with it. But then last up, of course, is the achievements. And overall, <laughs> I think the achievements are fine with the game. You get achievement every time you beat a map. So anytime you visit a new location and just complete it, you get an achievement for it. There's a couple achievements to help so many souls go east. And then there's a couple achievements where you kill so many outlaws. The nice thing about helping the souls go east, you don't have to even complete the challenge. As long as you accept the burden... Of those souls, even if you end up dying, it still counts towards you. So always say yes to those people and you'll get the achievement eventually. So overall, I think the achievements are okay for this game. It's just it's just a frustrating game to play. Eventually is a keyword because you got to get past things to get achievements in this game. Yeah. And that is true. To put it into perspective, <laughs> I got 1 out of 22 with a total of 10 gamer score. Keith, 2 out of 22 mm. with 20. Booyah. And Andrew got 16 out of 22 with 360 out of 8,000. Yeah. Oh, wait. Does that sound right? Yeah, I think the last couple of achievements like to beat the game are worth a ton. Yeah. Dumb. Which, I got to the last area. You didn't beat the game yet? No. I got to the last area and died. Do you know the ending? Yeah. Is it good? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> we won't spoil it for you, but... It's basic. Mm, pumpkin spice uh, lattes and such. Got it. <laughs> so, getting into our final thoughts. Overall, I think West of Dead isn't awful. If they had a couple more patches and fix some of the things, whether make it easier for you to get more sin to unlock the weapons or make the weapons cheaper, I think it would be a little bit better. I would love if there was more skippable dialogue or skipping the stupid here's an outlaw fight beginning and you just kind of stand there and do nothing. I wish the controls were a bit more tighter as well. There was, actually, we forgot to touch base on a little bit. I actually got a couple glitches. Did you get any, Liz? No, I don't think so. They weren't anything too crazy. The most annoying one is when I went to the witch, it would kind of get rid of your HUD and darken the screen a little bit where you open the shop and spend your sin. And when you exited, sometimes it wouldn't get rid of, like, the enclosed screen. So I couldn't progress. I would have to close my run and start all over, at least, like, reload the game. It was quick, but... It was still a nuisance. So there was a little bit of glitches and hiccups that I had here and there. I thought the controls were just not tight. And I felt like if ever I lost, I just felt like I was more cheated than it was me screwing up. For me, I'm going to give this game just a solid 70. It can be worth your time, but overall, you're not missing much. Yeah, I might pull a Liz here because I was thinking about 70, but I don't think I had nearly as much fun with this game as you did. I was just saying the same thing. I think, yeah, I think the art style is kind of cool, and I really like what the game was trying to be, but I just, I, I just didn't really ever have fun. I mostly played it begrudgingly and hoped to get further and couldn't find myself doing it. Yeah, I think I'm going to drop it to a 68, because it is not nice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually was going to drop it down to 68 as well. But wait, you normally give uh, celebrity bonus points. That includes a celebrity bonus point. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's already factored in. That sucks. Because I do like Ron Perlman, you know? So, yeah. But what know. are your thoughts? I feel like I already said so much negative stuff. You know, I think at this point, it's beating a dead horse. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Which, if there's any international listeners, it's beating a dead horse. I wonder if that translates. <laughs> if they're like, why are you talking about beating a dead horse? <laughs> But Liz looking, abuses animals, is what she's saying. No way. <laughs> but looking at Metacritic, 75 and 6.5. Not the greatest. A critic that gave it a 70 said, The game doesn't waste its potentials when it comes to gameplay mechanics. However, unbalanced and unrewarding level design are major issues that the game suffers from. And another critic that gave it a 71 
It's a blast to play over and over again, despite issues with the geometry interfering with aiming and dodging not quite feeling as useful as it ought to. And I, I do think that there were a lot of the same complaints that we did, so I didn't do too many. But I was also really surprised that I felt like the people that wrote in, there weren't really any zeros, there weren't any tens. It was just very middle of the road. Did our French cohort give it a zero? No, I looked though. Wow. Nothing in French. I Must think have... he's done hundreds of games, right? The last couple he hasn't been playing. Maybe he finally gave up on video games. He just finally had enough. <laughs> He'd probably give this game a 10. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. He, he does seem to like kind of awful games. Yeah. But I think that's going to do it for us this week. And thank you all so much for joining us again. I've been your hardcore gamer host, Andrew. You can find me on Xbox Live at Firebird01952. I'm also on Twitch at twitch.tv Firebird01952. If you want to write us an email, we're at gamepassgrabbag at gmail.com. We're also on Facebook. That's where we do most of our polls and stuff, in which Liz just had a recent poll that just finished up. But she should have another one coming up, so be sure to follow us on our Facebook or on our Twitter at gpgbpod. If you feel so con- so inclined to support us, we also have a PayPal on our Facebook. Is it my turn to talk now? Um, I'll allow it. Yes. Uh, I've been Keith. Uh, you can find me at myspace.com forward slash I am underscore hardcore. And that's a real <laughs> real URL. Go look it up. Oh, wow. And I'm Liz Anoop, gamertag common I'm Dean, and I'm on Twitter at Liz Anoop, Noop is EW. And I've been Andrew. You. So we love you all, and we hope to see you again next week. <laughs> you get two outros. Hate you. Yep. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, guys. Y'all come back now, you hear?